So I don't know if this is going to be the, um, is this the final part? It might be. I thought that said Akane down there for a second. Axis. Axis. I still only have two of the f uh, six. I can count. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still only have two of the six endings. I was going to say maybe this will be the end of the stream of this. Are you all right? Uh, where am I? It was a foolish question. He knew it. Where did I leave off? Yes. Think so. No, explain. Where am I? Okay. So, this is still new stuff. I have a choice to make. It feels like I'm basically at the end of the game, but am I not? Like, how long can I drag this out for? I don't know. I'm going to find out. This could be a five-minute stream. It could be a five-hour-long stream. You never know with this game. Her voice was so weak. Also, hello. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, hello. The fever had gone down, but the emotional scars she'd received were not likely to recede as quickly. Junpei laid his hand on her shoulder, and they walked back to the bedroom. You should get some rest. Here, the bed. Can you sit? Yes. She nodded once and stared at the floor. Right, I think I just completed the, um, the engine room, right? Yeah. No, I know it was at the cargo room. It was something that took way too much mental power. From my brain. I, I, I can't think anymore as a result. Thinking capacity reduced to zero. There were four others in the room. Ace, Lotus, Santa, and Seven. They all stared at nothing, their faces drawn and tired. Oh, that's right. Clover's dead. That's right. I forgot. I wanted to get back to this as soon as possible, but I couldn't do it immediately afterward because, I don't know, I, get, I have some mental block in place for that. Uh... After a while, they drifted into the bathroom to see Clover's corpse themselves. Once everyone was back in the bedroom, Junpei walked slowly to the center of it and looked around as slumped figures gathered there. Who was the first to find the body? Also, how's my audio? Right there. Who was the first to find the body? Also, how's my audio? It's audio. Me. Seven spoke from behind Junpei. He turned around. Seven's hand was up. Why did you come to this room? To look for Clover. Why else? Oh, are we sus? I found her body in the bathroom. We're gonna be suspicious of him? As soon as I did, I ran outside. I got to the top of the stairs by the casino and yelled as loud as I could. Hey, guys! I found her, but it's bad. She's in the bathroom in the first class cabin. Come quick! Or something like that. Then I went back to the bathroom. Ace, Santa, and Lotus showed up real soon after that. But I guess you two hadn't heard me or something because you didn't show. So I took off down the stairs to look for you. After that, I, I mean, you know the rest, right? <sighs> Jinpei nodded and closed his eyes. There was one more thing he needed to ask. Seven, th there's one more thing I'm worried about. What? You stuck one of those plates in between the door and the frame, right? Why did you do that? <sighs> come on, didn't I already tell you that? I did it so that the door wouldn't lock. So we could come back to this room? Oh, you think I did it? Genuinely, no. But Junpei's an idiot, so you, maybe. Well, I don't know. That kind of depends on what you say, doesn't it? For crying out loud. <laughs> Seven sighed and shook his head. Follow me. There were two doors standing next to one another. He opened the one on the right. How did she die again? It, was it a... Was it? it was a... I forget if the wound was described to me or not. I feel like it was, but I can't remember. Yeah. Seven stepped inside. He stood in front of one of the shelves that filled it and gestured toward a small box. The box was a small metal cube. Where? Hold on a minute. No, not... Fuck. Right side. Okay. He looked at Junpei. This is the reason. This safe. We couldn't open it when we were getting through this room. I was gonna say, this is the path where we did this route, right? So... Is it different if I do the other way? I don't know. I figured there might be something pretty important. I'm, I'm trying to, like, vocalize my 
thoughts on the screen. My thoughts uh, by moving the cursor in weird ways, as if you could understand the cryptic meaning. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I figured eventually we might figure out what the numbers are for the safe. I thought we opened this, did we not? And if we did, I didn't want to screw around with door five again. My fucking phone is in the no, go over here. There we go. So I put the plate in the exit door so we could get back in that way. You get it now? The phone was in the way of the mouse. Yeah. Junpei nodded and looked at the safe. He grabbed the handle and shook it. Figured it wouldn't open. It was locked as it had been when Seven found it. Huh? There was one change, however. This is... Hmm? Just underneath the safe was a pile of fine reddish-brown powder. Russ. Junpei stared at it, considering. If there's rust here... Has someone opened the safe? Junpei left the closet. Seven followed him back to the bedroom. Uh. Uh. Huh? Uh. I'm trying to think of a single person other than Seven that I'm not suspicious of. And like, it's no, no, but there's nobody. You you already did something. I saw it happen on screen. Did I bump my microphone? No, okay. My microphone looks off askew. You actually she's been the least guilty in terms of suspicious shit. She's just been kind of like Yeah, I guess she's okay mostly. You no. <laughs> I don't trust you. No one spoke. They sat frozen in place by shock and grief and fatigue. The room felt tiny and oppressive, and the thick metallic smell of blood filled the room. <sighs> you know, I can't relate. I don't know what a gigantic puddle of blood smells like, unfortunately. I'll try to get back to you on that one. Junpei turned and headed for the living room. Anything to get out of there. Maybe there's another clue. Anything that might lead us to discover who stabbed Clover. It was a stab wound, okay. I was gonna say, if it was a gunshot wound, well, you know. As quickly as they could, they searched around and under the beds and the corners. His eyes caught the door. The door that led to the passageway of door number five. Behind this door. The night Sorry, man's itchy. Behind there. Maybe I should have another look at it. Just in case. What? Quietly, he pushed open the door. Oh, God. Ima imagine the smell after a couple hours. The smell hit him like a, a blow to the face. Oh, the hell? The, the smell is... His lungs contracted, unwilling to inhale such fetid air. Acid boiled up from the base of his stomach, churning what little food was there into a violent froth. <laughs> it was too much for him, and he vomited. A thin stream of yellow water and bile splattered onto the floor. F four? Floor. Ew. He wiped his mouth weakly and stared at the dead body. Chunks of torn flesh lay in an arc around the body. What remained of his intestines had slid out onto the floor. The pool of blood that framed it was half dry, but so thick that it had taken on a texture not unlike that of an egg yolk. Prepared, sunny side up. Well, I was, like, gonna drink this drink, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. I require the caffeine. On the floor, next to the broken mass of the man's head lay his glasses, cracks spidering across the lenses. The bloodstains near them had already dried, like scabs on the floor. Wait. That was when he noticed. It's... it's gone. The bracelet? This bracelet. It's gone. It was right next to the glasses. Hmm, wh why? But now... It was gone. The number nine bracelet was gone. But why? <laughs> Had someone taken it? 
There's got to be like a piece of merchandise that was released with this game where you can buy a replica bracelet, right? Probably. He was turning it over and over in his mind when he heard Seven's voice. Where'd Junpei go? It had drifted out to him from the living room. Uh. Junpei walked slowly out of the hallway. Oh, there you are. Were you looking for something in the hallway? Seven looked up as Junpei entered the room. Yeah. Did you find something? Uh. He thought for a moment before he responded. No, nothing. Technically, it wasn't a lie. Technically. He hadn't found anything in a way. In fact, that was the problem. Something he'd expected to find hadn't been there. The ninth man's bracelet. What's up? Ah, uh, well, I wanted you to take a look at something. What is it? Seven led Junpei back to the bathroom. Clover. As Clover's corpse came into view, he felt his heart flip and then fall to the bottom of his stomach. <sighs> Something between a sigh and a groan escaped his lips. What was it you wanted to show me? His voice was hollow and empty. I searched Clover's body again. Real shame. She was stabbed once in the back. Probably by a knife or something. And I found this. As he spoke, he moved around Clover's head. Then knelt down and flipped open her right hand. What? Hmm? She was holding a piece of paper. Is that what she, um... Because she yoinked the piece of paper from the dead dude in that one cabin, right? Did that happen in this route? I can't remember. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff. Well, I did borrow one thing. What? He wasn't sure what that meant, but it likely didn't matter. The paper was more important. I'm opening it. He picked it up and carefully opened it. There were two sentences written on it. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Ah, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. Oh fuck, you can't throw riddles at me, come on. What is this? Some kind of secret code? Seven peered over Junpei's shoulder at the note. Junpei stepped away from Clover's body, hey Sigma, and into the living room. He began to pace, attempting to decode the note. Hmm, a code. The first clue was likely the phrase, Sinister Hand. Sinister hand means... I don't know? I actually have no clue. Wait. Should I? Left hand? Sinister was a term used in heraldry that meant to the left of the bearer of a coat of arms. Oh yeah, of course I knew that. The left hand. Hmm. The left hand. What does the left hand mean? Yeah, I totally knew that. Junpei looked at his own left arm. I, I just assumed because that's the arm that they have the bracelets on. At the bracelet on his wrist. Does the darkness of the sinister hand have something to do with the bracelet? He examined his bracelet closely. There's two things sticking out on either side of the face. The left and right sides of the face. Hmm. <laughs> Left and right. Left and right. Right and left. Left, right, left, right, right, left. Is that a code to get it off? Truth is gone. Truth gone. Hmm. Could try it. Truth gone. Maybe those two words. Gone had truth, and gone had truth, gone had truth. 
No. Man, I'm too dumb. Um, hold on. I need like a sound bite that I can play when I'm thinking. You just like gear cranking or like rock sliding noise. I don't know. I don't know if rock sliding noise fits. I need like a gear cranking noise. Can I get that? Can I go to YouTube and get that? Gear cranking sound effect. No, what? No, that's not what I said. YouTube! Thank you. It re it recorrected it to crank landing gear. Metal gear alert. Was this one? Does this work? Yeah, there that works. He's thinking. Hmm. That's like actually I need that. I'm gonna keep that tab open for later. That's really good. What else could gone and truth mean? Truth, of course, means something that is correct, something that's fact. In other words, something that is right. You could then safely assume that gone means left. After all, after someone left, they were gone. But in this case, they clearly refer to their directional homonyms. Then truth equals right, and gone equals left. Is he gonna blow himself up? Junpei looked at the bracelet again. You might as well try. Left and right of the bracelet. And fuck it. These two things sticking out. So if I... Press them in the following order. It was truth had gone. Truth had gone. So... No. Right, left, right, left, left, right, right? Right... Right, wait, right, right, left, right, left. No. That's not an option? Oh, left and right. Left and right, left and right, right and left. Left and right, left and right. Left and right, uh, 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 left and right, left and right. Left, left, right, right. What? Wait, I'm con what did it say again? Sorry. <laughs> fuck. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna blow myself up, aren't I? Um. That's not what it said, though, right? Like, it's. Uh, truth is gone. Truth is gone. Truth is gone. Truth, is it right, left, right, left, right, left? Is it this one? Whatever. And then... That was the correct one. One after number eight numbers flashed on and then off of the face of Junpei's bracelet. Wait, did it just... He checked one more time to be sure. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. I need that number. Give me that number! One, four, Mine. three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Hey, what are those numbers? <laughs> it is a secret that we will need for later. Junpei didn't answer. Why do I have auto on? Oh, I took a screenshot, that's why. He couldn't answer. He had no idea what they were either. 
Besides, he was sure he would forget the numbers and the order that they came in if he'd said anything. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Muttering the numbers to himself over and over, Junpei handed toward the bedroom. He added, One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. 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 Before long, he found himself in front of the safe again. Its lock was the only device he could think of that required a sequence of numbers such as the ones he'd just discovered. Besides, someone had opened the safe at least once already. Had Clover come to the bedroom to open it? <sighs> Junpei slowly dialed in the numbers the bracelet had given him. One to the right, four to the left, and... Oh. Finished. Bingo. It worked. I knew it was for this. I, I don't know if I picked the correct thing or not by accident. I, I It wasn't by accident, but I guess the small telltale sound of a lock opening. He grabbed the handle and took in a deep breath and pulled it up. Oh, is this some sort of note? Oh, no. Inside was a piece of paper. It was roughly the same size as the one Clover had been holding. Let's see. Junpei picked it up. This was what it said. Fact number one. The Nonary game was played once before, nine years ago. Fact number two. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. Fact number three. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceuticals CEO... Gentaro Hongo, Cradle Pharmaceuticals Chief of Staff, Nagisa Nijisaki, Cradle Pharmaceuticals R&D Supervisor, Teruaki Kubota, Majority Shareholder in Cradle Pharmaceuticals, Kag Kage Chika Musashido, Sh Shido. I must punish them. For the innocent lives that they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved, I now state the truth. Zero. Junpei left the closet. Huh. There were five people waiting for him in the bedroom. Ace, Lotus, Santa, Seven, and Jun. He looked at each of them in turn, then slowly placed his hands in the pockets of his vest. Sorry, but do you think you could all come with me? Mr. Ace Man, could you stand in the corner? Come with you. Was he the CEO at the time? Because, like, nine years is a, is a lengthy time, you know? I mean, maybe... No, that's pretty fucking suspicious. I want all of you to go to the big hospital room. Why? There's something I want to be sure of. What do you want to be sure of? What is your names? I want to know if the person I suspect is really the culprit. Wait, then you're saying... Yeah, I think I've got it figured out. I know who <laughs> killed Snake and Clover. The atmosphere in the room changed. Grief was suddenly gone, replaced by a tension like a strap of leather stretched to its limit. Five sets of eyes stared at Junpei. He pretended not to notice. Anyway, if you could all please move to the big hospital room. I'll explain everything as soon as we get there. Then, almost as if on cue, the bell began to ring. They all heard it. It was the bell from the clock in the main staircase. Five a.m. The bell rang five times and then ceased. It's five o'clock. We've only got an hour left. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go. 
Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out of the bedroom. Actually, uh, before we get started, I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stopped in front of door three and turned around. Ace, Seven, and Lotus, could you please place your palms on the red? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just... No, we're not going inside. Once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Why? Please, just do it. Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover. Junpei's implication was clear, and Seven understood perfectly. <sighs> Fine. What about you, Ace? Lotus? Very well. Sure. Quickly, they pressed their palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shone from the red's display panel. I have this idea. I don't think this device responds to a hand placed on it. It instead reacts to a bracelet being brought close. You don't actually need a hand. The Ninth Man's Bracelet. I didn't even think about that. Junpei approached it and his, he held his bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it and instead only brought his bracelet near it. It does kind of make sense. The fourth asterisk appeared. I knew it. Just as Junpei had expected, it was possible to authenticate without placing one's palm on the red, so long as the bracelet was brought near it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine long seconds passed. As the door shut, un... un, un unfed? Un, unfed. Oh man, I know how to read. Unfed. Shouldn't unfed have a hyphen in it? No, I don't know how to fucking speak English. Are you kidding me? Junpei walked back slowly from the others, who were waiting some distance from the door, take, talking to one another. Santa and June had joined him as well. <laughs> huh? He looked as though they hadn't found a chance to break into the conversation yet. As Junpei approached, they turned to look at him, curiosity plain on their faces. Before long, the other three did as well. What was that about? Man, if they had the ninth man's bracelet, who, who would have been able to do that? Digital root of because that's not that's not snake, right? So, activate, I don't know, I can't, I can't do math in my head, man. Can How you? should I know? Why do you say nothing, huh? Clearly, they were all expecting some answers. Thanks, I appreciate your cooperation. It was Maya, Maya, what the fuck is his name? Masayoshi Shido? It actually was... Oh, Alright. Masayoshi Shido. I know that's not how you say it, but I, I don't speak Japanese. Clearly, they'd hoped for something more forthcoming. He continued. By the way, Ace, would you mind if I asked you something? What is it? Do you know who I am? W what? What kind of question? Just answer it, please. Who am I? You're Junpei, of course. Who else would you be? We're singling out Ace, aren't we? Unfortunately, that's the wrong answer. Hmm? Actually, I'm Santa. W what? Oh, wait. Is... Is that what that what? Wait, what's happening? 
I'm confused. Ace's voice was full of surprise, but it was also tinged with confusion and fear. Everyone else looked nearly as surprised. <sighs> Actually, I'm Santa. I still don't know what that- what? Santa looked especially shocked to discover he was actually someone else. If he spoke, however, the trap would be exposed. Junpei quickly continued. The clothes I'm wearing, I borrowed from Junpei. And the clothes he's wearing are mine. We had a little swap. That's ridiculous. Impossible. So, you're saying I'm not Santa? Of course you are. Why? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. One plus seven plus eight plus three equals 19. One plus nine would be 10. The digital route would be one. But the four of us just opened door three. You can't possibly be Santa. Your bracelet number isn't three. It's five, right? Huh? Only then, when it was too late, did Ace realize his mistake. He set his jaw and glared at Junpei. You're exactly right. My bracelet number is five. As he spoke, Junpei lifted his wrist up to show everyone the bright red five on his wrist. Red? It's bl the number is blue. I guess the bracelet's red. Sorry, Ace. I tricked you. Of course, I'm not really Santa. I'm Junpei. Who could possibly think I was? <laughs> it's obvious I'm not. Th to think I was? Ridiculous. But I guess you couldn't see just how obvious it was. <sighs> I asked you before, didn't I? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? And you answered. If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. Most people wouldn't say something like that. The first thing that would come to anyone else's mind wouldn't be the bracelet number. There'd only be one thing they'd say. One sentence. You don't have his face. Oh, we're back to- I forgot about that. Shit. <sighs> so he does have that. Ace, you have prosopagnosia. Am I right? I, I completely forgot about the prosopagnosia thing. Junpei's voice was calm and quiet. He knew the truth. So did Ace. Prosopagnosia? The others looked confused. What's that? No clue. Prosopagnosia is... He heard Lotus begin to explain it to them. Ace glanced at them, then turned back toward Junpei and sighed. Very well. I confess. I have prosopagnosia. I cannot differentiate human faces. Is that what this was about? You want to mock me for my disorder? No, no, not at all. I'm not making fun of you at all. In fact, I feel kind of bad for you. No, the reason I brought this up is that there's an excellent chance the person who killed Snake has prosopagnosia. Ace's face tightened, his eyes narrowed. What do you mean? Junpei leaned casually against the iron piping of one of the beds. I'll just come right out with it. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. <laughs> like direct accusation. Junpei was suddenly very aware of five pairs of eyes on him. He had their undivided attention now. Oh, good. The room had grown very, very quiet. Junpei took a deep breath. That's ridiculous. What possible evidence do you- I have three pieces of evidence. The first. Think back to a few hours ago. You made us argue over the three doors here in the big hospital room. There was no way all seven people could go through them. Lotus suggested that we sacrifice one of us. <laughs> Lotus looked away awkwardly. Junpei glanced at her and continued. Then you, Ace, said, I'll stay here. Why would you say something like that? It's pretty simple, really. You didn't want us to see the dead body in the shower room. <sighs> you see? 
If Ace stayed behind, there were only two doors the rest of us could go through. Door seven and eight. There was no way we could get through door three, the shower room. I didn't even think about that. You knew that, didn't you, Ace? That's why you volunteered to stay behind. Come on now, I think that's going a bit far. I can understand if you're jealous of my bravery, but please don't devalue my actions. Well, Ace is also the one that brought up the whole let's not infight thing, you know? Which I was immediately like, oh yeah, he's suspicious. What if this is the route that everyone else has guns? Everybody's got a gun, except for me. I only wanted to save the rest of you. Surely you can understand my altruism. Altruism? Altruism, huh. That's what I said. Junpei stared off into the darkness at something very interesting and lazily began to dig a per persistent bit of wax out of his ear. Ew. You already knew, didn't you? You knew that whichever doors we took, eventually we'd end up back in the big hospital room. What on earth are you saying? Of course I didn't know that. How could I have? Really? Yes, yes. And pleading was not something they'd heard from Ace before. <laughs> Junpei pulled the piece of wax from his ear, glanced at it, and flicked it off into the darkness. God, ah, I hate imagining that. Oh well, that's cool. I've still got two more pieces of evidence that say you're the killer. The second is that, as I said earlier, you have prosopagnosia. Then you mean to imply that a person who can't distinguish human faces must be a bad person? Junpei, they call that prejudice. No, I am not that stupid. Then why? Well, before I explain, I suppose there's something I should tell you. The corpse in the shower room. It's not snakes. Wait a minute, when did he... That's... When did he realize this? Because this happened in the other... Ra I don't know. What? Sorry, I did take a drink. Ace's face went pale. The others looked confused as well. If the body wasn't snakes. I didn't put it together right away, but there was something Clover told me. She said that Snake's left arm was prosthetic. He'd lost his real arm in an accident. <laughs> David Cage's newest installment, 999. Oh god, could you imagine? Oh, uh, how would a David Cage version of 999 go? Oh, I'm like trying to imagine it. Sorry, you missed clicking on my desk to find out my son's name. I'm actually zero. Blows up the ship bad ending. To get the best ending, please replay through the whole game. Thank you. But the body we saw in the shower room, let's call him Guy X. Guy X's left arm was definitely flesh and blood. In other words, Guy X couldn't possibly have been Snake. Oh god. No. That's impossible. What, did he throw the wrong fucking person in there? Ace had started muttering deliriously to himself, shaking his head back and forth. Junpei was long past caring. Let's say, hypothetically, that the killer didn't have prosopagnosia. If that were the case, he would immediately realize that Guy X wasn't Snake. Even if the clothes were the same as Snake's, their faces would be completely different. It would have been obvious they were different people. And yet, they still killed him. Why? Why would they kill a stranger who'd only just shown up? <sighs> On the other hand, if the killer did have prosopagnosia, it makes sense. They thought Guy X was Snake and killed him. But who is Guy X? And who is the dude in Zero's supposed captain's quarters? The bald looking dude that looks like the... Marquis from Cold Steel. Wait. Wait just a moment. Was he a Marquis? Mar Marquis? Marquis? The fat guy that got drunk and... Uh, Let's say you're right. And I mistook Guy X for Snake. Even if I did, I would have had no motive to kill him. Why would I want to kill Snake? I can think of at least two motives. One. Snake knew about your past. If he ever revealed what he knew, that would have been really bad for you. You really didn't want that to happen. So to make sure Snake's mouth stayed shut, you killed him. <sighs> Two. Snake had a grudge against you. You knew that, or at least you could have easily assumed he did. 
Even without exposing your identity, he was a threat to you. You never knew when you might be attacked. I need, I need to know, like, is he, he... He said he was the CEO, right? But, like, again, CEOs can change over time. But, like, I need to, I need, I need to know. Is it the same guy? You couldn't ever let your guard down. Every moment was a moment he might try something. You didn't want that kind of danger hanging over you. So you... Hey, hold on a minute. For the first time since the beginning of Junpei's explanation, someone besides Ace spoke. What's the past that Ace wouldn't want us to know? Why did Snake have a grudge against him? Look at this. Oh boy. <laughs> he handed Santa a small piece of paper. What's this piece of paper? Santa squinted at the paper and began to read. The nonary game was played once before nine years ago. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO Gentaro Hongo. What is this? Slowly, Santa looked up from the paper. His eyes met Junpei's. It's the message from Zero. It was in the safe in the first class cabin. What I want to know is where did Clover get that paper? Was that the paper from the dude in the cabin? Or where? Fuck, I can't put it together in my head. Then suddenly. Oh, fuck. Give me a break! Ace's face was red and shaking. His voice was full of fury tinged with desperation. That paper is a lie! Oh? Someone is trying to frame me! Me. You said me, right? Junpei's eyes narrowed and the trap began to close. <gasps> so that confirms it. Ace inhaled sharply. His eyes flicked off to Junpei to something. Uh, his eyes flicked off of Junpei to something, anything else. Wouldn't that mean... You're admitting you're Hongul, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Or am I mistaken? It was though a switch had been flipped. The color drained from Ace's face and he realized what he'd done. His eyes went wide. Very well. I admit that much. I am certainly the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical, Gentaro Hongo. So what if I am? I don't know anything about this nonary game that supposedly took place nine years ago. Everything on that scrap of paper is bullshit. Oh, he's angry. Someone is trying to set me up, you see? <laughs> first of all, first of all. Ace stammered as he tried desperately to work himself to a more tenable position. Junpei, you're claiming I did this all by myself. Think that over, all right? How could I have killed Snake all by myself? Not Snake. It was Guy X. I don't care who it was. You said the killer put this other man into door three, right? Ace's bracelet, one. Ninth man's bracelet, nine. Ten. Snake's bracelet, or at least somebody with a number two bracelet. Three. Yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Then I couldn't have possibly done that alone. I couldn't have opened door three with only myself and Guy X. Nope, you could have. <laughs> does it? Does he have the bracelet? Like, they search him or something? Come on. I want. If he has the bracelet, then yeah, he's fucking. He's fucked. Huh? Huh? Oh, I think he's still fine. Okay, we don't know for sure that like the pharmaceutical company was responsible, right? Like, is that confirmed? That was just a suspicion. I don't know. What? Ace's face was tight. His teeth were clenched. Junpei fixed him with a level stare. The trap was about to close. Actually, Ace, when you were unconscious, I took something from you. Remember when you were injected with that anesthetic and fell asleep in the big hospital room? Yeah, back then, I took this. Junpei put his hand into his pocket. No, you couldn't have. He's checking for it. Ah, uh, Ace's right hand moved. Junpei smiled. I got you, Ace. Your right hand there tells me all I needed to know. You want to tell me what you were so worried about? 
What's in your pocket? <clears throat> it's the number nine bracelet, isn't it? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Ace, Guy X, and the ninth man's bracelet. That was all you needed to open door three. Yeah, yeah, I know the math. I just That's did how it. you killed Guy X all by yourself, Ace. All you needed was the number nine bracelet in your chest pocket. Ace lowered his hand from where it had stopped, halfway to his pocket. Does he have the gun? Please, no. He looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth, twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead, tell me. I don't have the bracelet, if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force. Right, Seven? Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> See, I like Seven. This is my dude, you know? Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ace roared with his laughter He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed Filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there Oh god Then it stopped <laughs> His arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei His face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Well done, Junpei. Oh my god. <laughs> look, I don't want to say that it was like... Look, he's kind of got the look of like... Old dude anime villain, you know? As you so correctly deduced, I have the number nine bracelet. I retrieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware for the red. I left the room I was supposed to search and headed to the first-class cabin on B-Deck. He was walking down the hall, wasn't he? I remember that. His voice showed no emotion, no sense of remorse or interest. It was almost bored, as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number nine bracelet. Nine is a potent ally in the nonary game. Adding nine to any set of numbers won't alter the digital route. Oh, really? It won't? I do remember Seven saying he traced influence from Cradle Pharmaceuticals into what kids got kidnapped for the first game. <laughs> Weissman. As you can see, nine is a very useful number here. With it, one can go anywhere with anyone. It is, I suppose you could say, a game changer. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it. In mere moments, I successfully acquired the number nine bracelet. There was also an unexpected bonus. The knife the ninth man had used. I forgot he had a knife. Oh my God. I quickly pocketed both of them and left. I made my way back to where I was expected to be. <laughs> I even like, I was like, where did he get a knife at the very beginning of the game? Didn't I say, I said that. I said that, and I said That's that. when I ran into Snake. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> well, this guy X, actually. I spotted him ahead of me. He was heading for the large hospital room and had noticed me. Who is it? The man wearing Snake's clothes arrived at door three. Why was there a guy wearing Snake's clothes? Explain! When he stopped, I walked up behind him and called out. Snake. He turned around. He said nothing. His mouth simply hung half open. Who is that? He seemed dazed somehow, almost like a man half asleep. Perhaps he had been drugged. It wasn't important. I tend to gloss over little things like that. I was certain that man was Snake. I knew Snake had taken part in the nonary game nine years ago. 
Being blind, it made sense that he didn't recognize me immediately upon our first meeting. But why then hadn't Snake said anything to me later? Surely he hadn't forgotten what had happened to him in the nonary game. But not once did he attempt to confront me. Did his lack of sight prevent him from fully recognizing who I was? Or perhaps Snake had conspired with Zero to deceive me? So here's the thing about Snake. So... That note is interesting, because here's, here's the thing about Snake. Snake's left arm is fake. And the bracelet is on their left arm. So how does it read a pulse if it's on a fake arm, you know? I, I don't know. It, it seems suspicious to me. Clover talked about it before. They have motive to fuck with him. What I don't understand is why they would bring in other innocent people. Like, why is Lotus here? Hell, why is Seven here? Huh. Regardless, he was a threat, and it was better to deal with him sooner rather than later. I had to get rid of him before he took action. With quick thinking, my plan went into motion immediately. I held the number nine bracelet over the red. I waved my own bracelet in front of the red, and then grabbed Snake's arm and shoved his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. I threw the man through it. <laughs> Nine seconds later, the door shut. 81 seconds passed. I still don't understand how nobody heard that. The man inside the door passed away. That's a light way of putting it. <laughs> After that, I returned to my post as though nothing had happened. After conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room when the 1 a.m. bell rang. Ace's eyes were cold and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. Pallid? I don't know that word. When he spoke, his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. <sighs> Is this playing into that whole, like, CEOs or psychopaths thing? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Junpei glared at Ace. He took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask. He didn't want to. He knew what the answer would be. He killed Clover. He just didn't want to hear it. Junpei swallowed and then spoke. Ace, did you kill Clover? Yes. Why? Why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It was possible he had told her something dangerous. Additionally, she had gone through door one. It seemed likely she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door one yourself? Which door was door one? I don't remember. Wait. God damn it! Was this door? That was that was that. That's where she got the paper. Okay. Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Already got it, <laughs> dude. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door one too. We didn't see anything suspicious. Yes, I thought as much after I heard your report at the central stairs. I remember I started calling BS on some plot details once I found out about Snake's arm. Something's wrong. Two of you could find it. Hmm? Huh? But perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was, therefore, desperate to find her. And at last I did, in the first class cabin. I spoke very calmly. Did you, did you see, see it? it? See what? Don't act as if you don't understand. You were in the captain's quarters, weren't you? Uh-huh. What are you talking about? Hmm. Very well. Uh... By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? What? Uh, nothing. There's blood on your shoes. It looks fresh. 
Did you go take a look at the Ninth Man's corpse? I see. Your silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? You saw that his bracelet was gone. No! Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her to the floor, hard. You're staying here. No! She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed and at a run. <laughs> Don't you run, little girl. He was faster. That was how I killed Clover. His face hadn't changed. If he felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it didn't show. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Seven's whole body trembled with rage and his voice rumbled with hate. <laughs> <gasps> Santa's eyes were bloodthirsty, and Lotus and June's faces were distorted by anger and hatred. Huh. Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it. I've lost. I have lost. Completely and utterly. Don't misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. Where am I in the flow? It automatically took me this way. Leave no one behind. Oh, that's the choice. Oh, I'm going down this route. Is this the correct route? It might lock off then if that's the case. I lost to zero. Not you. He's gonna pull a gun. <sighs> I'm rather disgusted with myself for falling into such a simple trap. I look the fool. And it was a trap, make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by Zero. The man I killed in the shower room? If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes, and that was no coincidence. Shit, maybe Snake is Zero. It kind of would make sense, right? Like, Snake bolts and then... Put someone else expecting them to die? He had also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. Come guardian. <laughs> Come guardian! And we can't forget the components that were removed from the red before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all of this. Zero made sure I would kill that man. <sighs> It follows, of course, that Zero knew everything I would do. That I would try to take the number nine bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. <sighs> Suddenly, Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. He remembered the last words Zero had written on it. I must punish them. For the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved, I now state the truth. Zero. And he remembered other words. Words he heard from Clover. I think Zero is... one of us. Yo, how fucked up would... How fucked up would it be if, like... Zero... is both of them? Like... Cause here's the thing, the... I don't know. I keep fixating on this. I remember the person in the gas mask being very short. And Clover is very short. So. Or or Snake was wearing a coat and was kneeling with his shoes in his knee. <laughs> with the, the shoes on his knees thing. That's also possible, I guess. Huh. Why would Clover bring it up then? One by one, Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. 
Ace. Santa. June. Seven. Lotus. I'm Zero. One of us. It's me. No. Wait. Not Junpei. Me. It's me. I'm Zero. There's one more person. Snake. The man who died in the shower room is in Snake. That means he's almost certainly still alive. Maybe Snake is Zero. Maybe he made Guy X wear his clothes so that we'd all think he was dead. Hmm. Or Snake now. Oh, yeah, where could he be? What if he's off somewhere laughing at us? Where could he be? If he is Zero, he must have been lying to us about everything else. Is he watching us? So it's good. Wait, no, that means. Is good that Clover's dead? Wait, uh, is Clover dangerous? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? Yeah, guys, let's get going. We're such best friends. He sounded as if he just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? You aren't going anywhere, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. We leave your ass here to rot. Uh, yeah, you can't, though, can you? Why? Because I killed Clover? That's ridiculous. Why are you so upset that I killed the little bitch? She was nothing to you. A stranger you only met a few hours ago. Am I wrong? You bastard! Oh boy. Seven roared and lifted a fist that would likely have shattered Ace's jaw. But someone else was faster. <gasps> oh, it was Lotus. She stepped toward Ace, raised a fist of her own. And drove it straight into his nose. Blindsiding me with a punch, huh? You've got some fire, don't you? I confess, I rather like a tough woman. Oh my god. He sniffed and wiped a small trickle of blood from his nose with a raised eyebrow. You gotta, you, you have to do the thing where you like press your thumb into your nose and like, you, 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 what do you call that? Like you smear your thumb across your face and it somehow blows the blood off of your face. It's some weird anime trope. Well, maybe you'd like another one then. Uh, before that, let me give you one of my own. Oh, no. Huh? Lotus had scarcely had time to blink. He's gonna have to... Ace snaked his arms around her and pulled Lotus's back up against him. In the same motion, he reached into his coat pocket and pulled out the fucking gun. It was a gun. We didn't have the gun! It was a gun! The revolver. I'm fine. Almost lazily, he tilted it to a point, to point at Lotus's head. If any of you so much as blink, I won't hesitate to pull this trigger. I've already killed two, no, three people. Don't think I'm not ready to make it four. Three people? What do you mean? Hmm. Very well. Let me take this opportunity to illuminate you. The person who killed the ninth man was me. What? Although I suppose to be more accurate, I encouraged him to get himself killed. You know, I never really questioned why the ninth man was so freaked out. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess that you... <laughs> While we were examining the main staircase, he came to me and told me his name. I recognized it at once. So I gave him a little push. Just a little white lie. Who is the ninth man? I want like a name. Because I, I don't know how he's associated with this. Still. It seems the settings for the dead were altered. Now it only requires a single person to deactivate the detonator in the bracelet. Investigate what's beyond door five. We'll meet again later. And with that. Okay, have a, have good, a good one, one guys. guys. I'm going, going off ahead, ahead now. now. Well then. Why is it stopping? God damn it! You, you lied! 
I forgot. He said that. Open the door, please. I'm begging you. Help me. Please get me out of here. Get me out of here. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I need to go back and listen to, I guess his name is Grimblow. <laughs> his name's Grimblow. I need to listen to Grimblow's um, spiel or whatever you call it. Spamton. Oh my god, oh my god. There's no time left. Listen, I was lied to. He lied to me. He put me in here. I completely forgot about this. It was him. He killed me. It was him. It's actually like kind of uh, weirdly obvious. <laughs> I should have. Mm, I should have. Uh. I had four reasons for killing him. As I said before, in the Nonary game, the number nine bracelet is of utmost importance. If I had allowed him to keep such a useful tool, he, or it, would have become a threat to me. As such, I decided that he should be eliminated early on. I wanted the number nine bracelet. If I could manage to obtain it, I would be able to manipulate the game as I saw fit. I would be unable to acquire the bracelet unless its owner was dead. That's the second reason. Even setting aside his number, he would have been nothing but trouble for me. He was aware of my past. He knew what happened here nine years ago. Who the fuck was he? It was important that I eliminate him before he was able to disseminate this information. Lastly, I wished to conduct a simple test. A test to see if this nonary game was serious, or a poor attempt at a joke. I needed to be quite sure. As such, I encouraged him to act against the rules so that I might observe the outcome. Junpei glared at him. I don't get your third motive. What the hell happened nine years ago? Didn't I say? The nonary game was played. I planned it out and I conducted its execution. Why? What on earth was it supposed to do? I don't really think I have any obligation to tell you that. Ace should be a politician? Ace smirked. He was trying to provoke them, and it was working. Although Ace had paid very little attention to Lotus after catching her, the gun had never wavered from her temple. She looked quite pale, and when she spoke, her voice shook. What's with this gun? Where did he get this? Why don't you tell her, Santa? I told you she's taking the gun! I told Junpei, I told him he can't hear me because he's a VTO game character. Take, take, take the gun! Santa ground his teeth and glared at Ace. On the other side of door six, we found the gun in the coffin in the cargo room, right? Bastard yes. grabbed it when we weren't looking. Indeed, I did. That was a pretty serious mistake, you know. Just saying you intended to leave it behind. Ace laughed a short, derisive snort and gave Junpei a sickly, sick, sickeningly pitying look. Well, there isn't much time left. I'll be off. My there. brain, like, combined the words sickeningly and pickly. Well, where are you going? Do I really need to explain? I had assumed it would be obvious. I have the number nine bracelet, and now I have Lotus. Ah, <sighs> yes, 18, nine. Wasn't there a door with a nine on it in the room that looked like a church? That's where you're going, isn't it? And how do you know that? Santa told me about it while we were looking for Clover. I see. Well, you are correct. That is the my destination. But now I must say goodbye to all of This you. makes me even more confused that... Was Ace in the door with Santa? When they found the gun, he might have been. He must have, like, told him something? I don't know. Ah, and please, don't forget my warning. Move and I'll pull the trigger. I don't need her alive to open the door, you know. As he spoke, Ace began backing toward the door, practically dragging Lotus behind him. Shit. He's getting away! But we can't risk it. 
Oh. Oh, that's my ear doing. What the fuck? You done, ear? I gotta stop listening to music so loud. Like, I don't want to say my ear just rang. It did like a... My right ear did like a... Noise. Like a, like a muffled... Low rumble? Oh, man. Am I gonna... Am I... Is my, is my fucking bracelet about to make me explode? Junpei Santa, June, and Seven stood frozen. Ace had the face of a man gone mad. They had no doubt he would pull the trigger. Ace had reached the exit. Now, Lotus, open the door for me if you would. <sighs> he forced Lotus to open it and then turned and addressed them once more. Goodbye. Is it gonna lock me off here? He then stepped through the door. It fell shut. In the blink of an eye, they were gone. Damn it! He seemed to know Ace, given that he's the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals, there's a good possibility he worked for him. Given that he knew about how the game worked previously, maybe he's one of the guys written on the paper. Like a higher up? Wait a minute. That would make sense. That would create incentive for him to trust him so much. And that, that would be why he said, it works differently now. Oh. Huh. As soon as Ace and Lotus were gone, Junpei and the others leapt for the door in pursuit of Ace. But as Junpei laid his hand on the doorknob... Uh -huh. Oh, God damn it, Jun! There was a noise behind him. He looked over his shoulder. Jun was kneeling on the floor, breathing heavily. Hey! June, what happened? Are you alright? Elise! Wait, wrong game. Santa ran to June and wrapped his arm around her before she could collapse all the way. Jesus, you're burning up. Your fever's back. Are you okay? Did somebody do something to her? Is she, like, drugged or something? June's fever had returned again for no apparent reason. Her eyes were watery and her eyelids drooped. Her breaths came in dry, shallow gasps. I'm okay. Really. I'm fine. You should be worrying about Lotus. She was breathing hard now. She could barely summon the strength to talk. But... Junpei was torn. He couldn't leave June alone in the state she was in. But every movement they waited... M m movement Moment they waited, Ace was farther away. Lotus's life in his hands. What was Junpei supposed to do? June's eyes drifted to Junpei's. She managed to muster a weak smile. I... Don't worry about me. I am zero. <laughs> I just need a little rest. I'll be fine. Don't you remember? I just needed to rest a little bit last time. So please, please save Lotus. Think about what Ace has already done, Junpei. When he's got what he needs from Lotus, you really think he's just gonna let her walk away? Damn it. You guys go on ahead. As soon as June starts feeling better, we'll follow you. Go! Ugh. Junpei looked at June. Huh. Blah. She nodded once. She couldn't manage much more. But it was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. All right. Come on, Seven. We're going after Ace. Hell yeah! Santa, you take good care of June. I'm trusting you. <laughs> he probably shouldn't, but... I, I don't think he's bad, honestly. I, I'm thinking he was manipulated into doing whatever the fuck he did on the left route. Santa nodded. Junpei turned before he had a chance to change his mind and started running toward the door. He could hear Seven's heavy footsteps behind him. Let's go! Junpei and Seven exploded into the hallway, their feet pounding the metal floor as they ran. Seven is my dude, man. He's gonna fix everything. They're gonna be gone already, aren't they? Shit.
<sighs> Junpei and Seven had finally arrived at the church, exhausted and out of breath. As their lungs struggled to catch their breath, their eyes frantically scanned the room. Where are they? I don't see them. You think they already went through? He reached up to wipe a palm full of sweat from his brow. Maybe. Even as he spoke, Junpei was already on his way to the larger of the number nine doors. Let's check the red. Vacant. Dis d display panel red vacant. He spun around and headed toward the smaller door. Still vacant? The red would tell him if Ace and Lotus had moved to another room. No, oh, yep. Yeah. It's occupied. Oh, my back it just. Uh. I've been sitting all fucking day. Ugh. Blech. The stretching is already necessary. That means Ace and Lotus went through here. Yeah, it, it seems like it. Junpei and Seven stepped away from the door. They were attracted to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Break the door down now. Yeah, what should we do? We gotta go stop June's killing spree before it starts. Well, the big door is still vacant, but... The two of us can't do anything with it. Yeah, not even counting how our digital route isn't nine. Just then, as they were pondering what to do next... Knock, knock. There was a noise. A noise like someone hitting a thick wooden panel. What's that sound? Junpei looked up, surprised. Seven followed suit, his eyes jumping around the room looking for the source of the sound. It's coming from over there. Oh, you know, maybe from the coffin? It wasn't long before they found the altar. One, or more precisely, what was on it. The coffin? We're finally gonna open this thing? Yeah. They've been waiting since, like, stream four to open this thing? Let's open it. Please. How? By force. I don't think that's gonna happen. Well, you never know till you try, right? The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer 1,000 failures. And that's why I play The Binding of Isaac. Who said that? Me. I forget. Wait, what? Hm. Anyway, we've got to try. Maybe that's different if I do another route first. I don't know. Wait, are, are there any other routes to do? Uh, no. I did everything. Uh. Junpain 7 leapt at the coffin. They grabbed hold of what purchase they could find and pulled. Are they really just gonna like open it by force? That's hilarious. Damn it! No, okay. See? Didn't I tell you? This is the part where the game really shoves it into your face that yes, you can open the coffin with the code you got earlier. I don't know why I sound like a Sesame Street character. If you could just pull it open, why would it have something like that? Mmm. I'm done with my black raspberry. Now I need fruit punch. Wow, that one was really pressurized. This one is not carbonated, though, which means I'm going to die. I said carbonated. I meant caffeinated. It is carbonated. If it wasn't carbonated, and, and it made that pressure sound, that would concern me, actually. Right. So unless I put in the right passcode, it's not going to open. Let me put it in. The noise hadn't stopped. In fact, it, as it continued, it had only gotten louder and more forceful. What were they supposed to do, Junpei wondered. Was there some sort of clue somewhere? See, I was thinking that Seven would be in this- Seven? I was thinking that Snake, I keep confusing them, was um, in this coffin, but like now I have no fucking clue. It's just random people are suddenly showing up. Why is there an FMV playing? They stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin, and then Seven spoke. Hey, Junpei, I remember you mumbling about some weird numbers over by the bathroom in the first-class cabin. Mm-hmm. You got those numbers by solving the secret message Clover was holding, right? Mm-hmm. Truth had gone, or 
Something like that. Yeah, that's right. What about it? Well, maybe that number's the passcode for this thing, too. Come on, that's impossible. Those numbers were the code to unlock that safe. Yeah, but the person who set up that safe in this coffin is the same person, right? Zero set up both of these. Yeah, probably. Well, then they might have set the same passcode for both of them. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just try it? I mean, it's not like you'll make things any worse. It'd just be a waste of time. There's no way they're the same number. How do you know that? You never know until you try. Yeah, come, Junpei? The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. <sighs> Put the fucking number in. Who said that? You. Me. Me. Knock, knock. Your pizza's here? Ah, fine. Hey, yo, the pizza's here. Oh, shit, I fell down the stairs. He knelt down in front of the keypad and looked at it. Perhaps because he'd repeated them so many times before, the numbers came easily to Junpei's mind. One, four, three, eight. Three, four, two, one. Quickly, he typed them in. I've been trying to quietly hit the space bar the whole stream instead of clicking the mouse. I think it's good. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think it's quieter. Why do I always get hiccups when I stream? He checked that he'd entered the right numbers, took a deep breath and pressed the E button. E. It only took a moment. Please open. Oh my god, what's what? in here? You gotta be kidding me. What is in here? Do you not get this scene if you don't do the left door? I think so. Left door, left route. That... God. No. Uh, th th this route, this route right here on the left, that one. There was a click. What is in here? I need to know. There was a heavy clunk and the lid of the coffin slid off onto the floor. Someone sat up from inside. It is, snake. it is Snake. You, why? Why are you wearing a fuck, what is that? Ah, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Hey Junpei, this coffin reminds me of uh, about futility. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? Does this game let the scroll wheel progress the text? No. A lot of visual novels do let you do that. I've been like, I I've been pressing my finger into the front of my spacebar and like pushing it slightly and then pressing it down. So it makes no like, you know, that uh. noise. I'm not damaging it, though. It's just making sure it's not touching. Like, it, I'm applying enough pressure so it doesn't touch the bottom of the keyboard. Very quiet. Because I, I, I know the microphone picks up the mouse click. It's not, like, that big of a deal, but it's you know, it's kind of annoying. Honestly, clicking it so much is kind of annoying me, too, if I'm being honest with you. And Junpei and Seven looked at one another. There was still a great deal he needed to know, but... I mean, to be fair, the, ma the scroll wheel on this thing isn't, like, quiet either. <laughs> But that's only if I get it, like, really close. They had to tell him something, however. So, they began to talk. Snake explained to them how he came to be locked in the coffin, apparently. He'd been hit with some sort of knockout gas. And Junpei and Seven explained what had happened to the rest of them. Oh, by the way, Clover's dead. Hmm. I see. I believe I got the gist of everything. <laughs> Clover's dead. Have I been sufficiently caught up? Yeah, your sister's dead. Sorry, uh, there was one thing they kept from him. There was one thing, however, that neither Seven nor Junpei could bring themselves to say, I'll do it, that Ace had killed Clover. They feared that if Snake knew, he might as well go insane. Yeah. Oh, don't lie to him. Come on. <laughs> He's mentally strong enough to take it, I think. Hell, I think it would be an important detail. That's his Organization 13 coat. Isn't that one of the Zodiac symbols on him? Um, is that Mercury? I don't fucking... Oh, it's okay. I'm looking it up. Uh, Zodiac... Astrology symbols. I was trying to figure out like what to type in exactly. Uh...
Zodiac planet symbols? Oh, wait, here we go. Is this it? I don't see it. Um, Zodiac planet symbols? I don't know what to fucking search. I thought it was Mercury. Maybe not. Mercury is like a female symbol with little horns on it. But it's got like a dot above it right here. See? My cursor showing up on the screen because I don't have the guy. It's not showing up on the screen. I will have to click back into the game. This. This like little dot up here. It looks like the Mercury symbol, but like, you know, a little dot. I don't know. There's a little dot. They decided as much by a look of a moment that Snake had climbed out. Wait, what? Snake, do you know about Ice Nine? They decided as much by a look the moment Snake had climbed out of the coffin. But that still doesn't explain why you were trapped in here. We've still got no clue about Zero's true identity, let alone why the hell he's doing all this. Why did he put Guy X in Snake's clothes? Is all this stuff somehow related to that notary game that was played nine years ago? Hmm. Hey, Snake, do you know anything? Uh, please don't be... <laughs> See, I don't want Snake to be evil. I don't hate him, you know, so... Junpei put the question to Snake, but he might be evil. His answer was less than illuminating. Illuminating. Um, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. It seemed as though Snake was perhaps not being entirely honest, but that knowledge did Junpei and Seven little good. Oh, come on, just tell us if you know. I don't know what to tell you. How can I know something I don't? <sighs> no matter how many times they asked, he insisted that he knew nothing. It was becoming clear that Snake wouldn't give in, and every second they spent asking him was a second wasted. This is bad. We're running out of time. We need to go after Ace. However... They stood in silence, the overpowering atmosphere of the chapel almost stifling. Junpei Seven and Snake simply stood at a loss for what they should do next. What do we do now? He glanced over at Snake's wrist. Sure enough, he could see the two on the bracelet on Snake's wrist. The three of us can't make a digital root of nine. Yeah, we just get five. We're stuck here then. Oh, hey. I just remembered something. Go, 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 June. Uh, Seven began patting his pockets as if he were checking to see if any of them had anything. Five plus... Wait, no, that wouldn't work, would it? No, it'd be five plus four. Oh, shit, Clover's dead. <laughs> Whoops. What? What is it? I, uh... I found something earlier. What? What did you find? This. He finally found the pocket he wanted, and his hand dove into it. Seven pulled out something round and metal. Oh. A bracelet. He picked it up and took it with him. There was no mistaking the number glowing at them from the face like a cartoon eye. Zero. Zero's bracelet. What did you say? Are you saying that Seven has the number zero bracelet? Are you saying that Snake has prosopagnosia even though he's blind? Yeah. Where did you get that? <laughs> Snake's question was innocent enough, but if he learned the truth, if he'd been able to see, he would have noticed Seven look away. Clover gave it to me. She did? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. How did she come by it? Uh, then, uh, well, you see... Well, she found it. You see... On the other side of door one, a deck, the captain's quarters. She asked me to hold on to it, because it was too big and bulky for her to be lugging around. He's lying. <sighs> Junpei could tell right away that Seven wasn't telling the truth. He even told us earlier. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff, though. Well, I did borrow one thing. He probably said that so Snake doesn't find out about Clover. 
Or he's sus. All right, Junpei. Been nice knowing you. No, I, I'm adamant about this. I think Seven's my dude. Wait, what? Yeah, we we gotta get left out. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just kidding. Still, just in case, I want to make sure the zero bracelet gets picked up by the red. Snake, give me a hand. All right. Uh, why do I got a bad feeling about this? Without waiting for a response, he started walking toward the door. Junpei and Snake followed him, quietly. Before long, they found themselves in front of the larger of the two doors. Seven and Snake put their palms on the red. <laughs> you see, she got it when she became the Sword of the End, that's all. Sword of the End? What is that? Well, you see... Uh... Yeah, Clover's dead. Once they'd done that, Seven put the number zero bracelet on the scanner panel as well. Yeah, I guess it works. The third asterisk appeared on the screen. Now they just needed to pull the lever and the door would open. Huh? Why isn't it opening? Uh... Well, the third asterisk lit up, so it must have registered the zero bracelet. Maybe it isn't actually zero. Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number zero when scanned. That is what I'm saying. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. You know, I was wondering what would happen if, like, we put in the wrong combination of stuff into the into the red. Oh, like, we ahead. haven't actually tried that yet, you know? Junpei nodded. They decided to use the following combination. Ooh, I can choose. Snake plus Junpei plus the bracelet. What would that be? Seven. How would that reach nine? It wouldn't. Well, I mean, it can't in any, anyway, so. All four of them? Let's try all three of us and the bracelet. Well, three and the dead guy. Snake plus Junpei plus seven. Two plus five plus seven equals 14. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is four. Wrong. Wrong. It didn't open. Then this bracelet is not four. Then... Is the bracelet a ten? Junpei plus seven plus, plus, plus the bracelet. Um... Is it just a random number that has nothing to do with the number zero? Let's try me, seven, and the bracelet. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is six. Just saying, I still am suspicious of June. So maybe. Yeah, June is zero. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's just a little suspicious to me. Yes, so it would seem. Seven clearly hadn't thought their experiment would produce anything useful, and looked rather confused. Snake was, as usual, calm and smug. The door slid closed. Junpei's forehead furrowed as he thought. That means the bracelet is actually six. But why? Hmm. But how is that possible? The display on the bracelet clearly shows a zero. <sighs> Suddenly, from somewhere far beneath them, they heard the creak and groan of tearing metal. Wait. Oh no. That's bad. That's- mm. Now with it came the sound of water pouring into parts of the ship that had until recently been dry. Uh, the ship is gonna break in half, isn't it? Oh man, that's not good. <laughs> I guess our time's just about up, huh? I didn't really think about, like, how the ship would actually start sinking all the way, because, you know... Like, once it's actually... 
what happens when large boats get submerged with a ton of water, the weight distribution gets all fucked up, and usually the boat will snap in half. That's what the Titanic did. So, you know, it's probably the boat's gonna snap in half. At any rate, we know now that the door can be opened. Let's go. The sussy has become the baka. But, Snake. What does that even are mean? You sure? What does that even mean? Yeah. You know that only Junpei and I can go through this way. You needn't worry. I have a solution to this problem. My last resort. But if now is not the time for last resorts, then when? You gonna put yourself in the coffin and become the Ice Nine Man? Last? Resort? Zero? Escape? Clover is dead? Wait, what? Nothing. Man, I'm with Seven all the way to the end, I guess. I mean, it's not the end yet. I'm not done yet. Oh, fuck. Imagine, like, if it just didn't work. It's like, wrong bla bra brace rit. Wrong bracelet. Bye-bye. Junpei Seven and Snake ran full tilt down a long straight hallway. They were headed for the stern of the ship. Had no time for distractions. Wait, how is Snake here? As they ran, Seven spoke. Gotta admit, you really surprised me there, kid. I couldn't figure out how the hell you were gonna get out of that one. How come you didn't do that right off the bat? What? As I told you, it was a last resort. Had I used it at the beginning of the game, I would have come under a great deal of suspicion. Oh, wait, did he take his arm off or something? Wait, I'm confused. I imagine that most people would have taken it to mean that I was Zero. Once they'd convinced themselves of that, I wasn't optimistic about my chances of making it out of here alive, let alone unscathed. I felt it best to play my cards close to the chest, as it were. That way, if I were in a situation where there was nothing else I could do... He could have taken off the bracelet any time, maybe? I'd have a little trick up my sleeve. What did he do, like, replace it with the other bracelet? I'd just take my bracelet off. Yeah. Snake's plan had been simple but effective. He'd simply removed his bracelet. How? To Junpei, it had looked as though Snake had simply crushed the bones of his hand until they were small enough to fit through the wristband. Of course, that would have been practically impossible, so... How had he done it? My brother's left arm is... Um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. Uh, Snake had slid the bracelet off and tossed it into the coffin. <laughs> I know this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm glad that's a fake arm. You don't have to be afraid of the door if you don't got a bracelet. You are correct. He'd walked through the door easily without authenticating. He stepped out of the other side unscathed and begun running down the hall alongside Seven and Junpei. So wait, I'm right then. Like, if you just chop your hand off and take off the bracelet, like, n nothing, no, nothing can hurt you, right? Mm. Well, I guess if you have to take the bracelet in to begin with. Well, no, for the main doors, you could just, like, go th <laughs> You could loop back around and pick up the bracelets afterward. Oh, no, wait, you need them for the dead. Ah. Oh. That's why the deads are there. Okay, now I gotcha. So, wait, wait. I guess what you could do is, like, I don't know. You could, like, have a subset of people that authenticate and are at risk of exploding. And have everybody else not have bracelets on. I don't know. They kept running for a while longer and eventually came upon a set of stairs leading downward on the right side of the hallway. They stopped and peered down the staircase. Like, how difficult would it be to smash your hand just enough to get a bracelet off of it. Like, you would probably just have to crush your, um... Yeah, you'd probably just have to crush, like, two bones, maybe three. The bones connecting to the index finger, maybe, but, like, for sure the bones connecting to the pinky and the thumb. Like, just crush it down a little bit. Just crush your crunch your hand down slightly, you know, it's not that big a deal. I think these stairs connect to the bottom deck. Doesn't look like it's underwater. I've seen people contort their hands in ways that they can get out of handcuffs. So, I mean, probably. They nodded quickly to one another and jogged down the stairs. How far deep into, am I into this? Oh yeah, no, there's not going to be another puzzle, I don't think. I think it's all story. 
It only took a few minutes to make their way to the bottom deck. There was a single hallway in front of them, at the end of which was a single door. Let's go through that door. Junpei threw it open. Inside was a massive iron grate. Great gate. A plate was affixed to the top of it. Incinerator? Incinerator? Incinerator. Incineror? Oh my. That doesn't sound very pleasant. Yeah, he is furry bait. Do you see a lever near the gate, perhaps? Yeah, right over here. How did you know that? Well, I'd be happy to regale you with the story. I imagine it should only take half a day or so. <sighs> well, hurry up. We don't have all day, man. Junpei grumbled and gave Snake a dirty look and jogged over to the lever. To the lever. If you pull it, the door ought to open. Got it. He pulled the lever down, Kronk. With the rumble of an ancient motor, the door opened. There was no need to hold back and no time to hesitate. They pushed their way inside. Standing in front of them were Ace and Lotus. Oh, fucking... Man, Ace still held the revolver in his hand. He was still pressed hard against Lotus's temple. A small, dark bruise had begun to form near the tip. <sighs> Even from several yards away, Jinpei could see that Lotus was shaking. She was terrified. But perhaps more interesting was what Junpei saw behind them. Another? What door is that? Another nine. Another number nine door. What? Why? Why is there another one? The door stopped Junpei in his tracks. It simply shouldn't have been there. As his brain finally began to consider why, the whine of a warning klaxon filled the air, drowning out any thought. What's a klaxon? I guess that. Emergency incineration command. Red alert. Has been acknowledged. I'm sorry. What? That. Automatic incineration will take place in <laughs> that. That. Mm -hmm. Nine minutes. Mm, well, we're gonna die. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. I didn't do that. Who did that? Oh my. How exciting. I hate him so much. You've run quite a show here, Zero. Oh, I guess he did that. Never mind. I still hate him. A terrifying smile twisted Ace's face. What's the matter? Too frightened to understand? God, he's so evil. Here, let me explain. It's said that the incineration system is about to activate. In nine minutes, this room will be engulfed in flame. Hmm. Who are you? Oh, he can't recognize him. You don't recognize me? I'm hurt. It's me, Snake. Snake? Snake? Oh, uh, yes. You are alive. Current, current look into his head as he said that. Snake. I'm gonna get so much use out of this fucking sound. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much use out of that. I'm afraid your bizarre style had me confused. I'm quite glad to see that you're alive. Is that actually what that alarm is called? It's called a klaxon? That sounds like a fucking... Sounds like a budget Klingon, like, ripoff name. The thing I called BS on when I found out about Snake's arm is in fact that... If in fact that were the case, why didn't his bracelet immediately open up because it didn't sense a pulse from his arm? That's what I was wondering, because like... Yeah, it should just fall off of him if it doesn't sense a pulse, but maybe it doesn't work off of pulse? I guess I did kind of assume that. But like, I don't know, it just like, it seemed like the most logical thing. There's random things in this game that don't make sense to me sometimes, like the whole wireless monitor thing was weird. They're in your incinerator at the very mo- at this very moment. Oh shit, I have it going right now too. Well, they're probably dead by now. As Ace's voice- oh, Ace's voice didn't change. 
That's why I have my fan on. I don't know if you can hear it. It's it's usually not picked up by the microphone because it's like because of the position of it. This room specifically, specifically, I can talk gets very hot. So I gotta like cool myself off. Ironically enough, even though it's like 20 degrees outside. Snake ground his teeth. That's the expense of having a singular heating point of this entire house, where it, like, it's just, it gets very hot. If you don't mind my asking, how did you get here? I've gotten it insanely hot before, to the point where it actually glows red. It's probably not a safe thing to do, but I just wanted to see if it was possible, and it is. After it did that, I kind of I choked off the air supply because I thought it would fucking melt, but it's it was fun. Snake June Pay Seven. The three of you couldn't have opened a door with a nine. Hmm. Did you use Clover's bracelet, perhaps? Oh, fuck off. What? Oh, fuck off. He's gonna... Uh, see, I was about to say, he's probably gonna tell him about Clover and taunt him with it, isn't he? Oh, no. Ah, huh. well. Your reaction suggests that you did not. Uh, hold on! Why did you think we'd have Clover's bracelet? We probably should have told him. Junpei felt his chest tighten. Oh, they haven't told you? Told me what? Hmm, clearly not. Normally I would take some time and enjoy the moment. But I'm afraid my time is at a premium just now. I'll have to make this quick. God, I hate him so much. Clover. Don't do it, Ace! Keep your goddamn mouth shut! Clover... I said stop it! <laughs> Clover! Don't listen to him, Snake. Junpei could feel his voice going hoarse, but Snake didn't listen to him. What happened to Clover? Uh, Ace looked at him. The corner of his mouth curled into the hook of a cruel smile. Clover died. I hate him so much. The color left Snake's face. He shook his head weakly. No, that's not true. That's impossible. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. Like, man, man you Snake a Star Wars fan? Oh, it's quite true. I can assure you of that. I killed her myself, you see. What? Oh, he's mad. Look at his face. I'm sorry, did I stutter? I killed her. <sighs> He's pissed. Snake's face twisted into a mask of rage, mottled red, rising to dot his pale skin. His entire body shook. He looked to Junpei disturbingly, like a demon. I would have rather she died with less suffering. A bullet in her brain, perhaps, would have been ideal. Unfortunately, that would have made quite a bit of noise. Circumstances being what they were, I was forced to settle for the knife. Um, the one the ninth man had, you remember. Imagine if Snake broke character and just went, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I believe I caught her just below the shoulder blade. Oh my god, I hate him so much. I was rather lucky, in fact. My first thrust went right between her ribs. <laughs> mm. Her flesh Ugh. was so soft. I am very uncomfortable right now. My knife slid in so easily. There was no resistance. Oh, he likes it. Mm. Uh, I'm just saying, like, if you could, like... It'd be so nice if he was just distracted enough for Lotus to rip the gun from him and just fucking blow his brains out. I, I, you just kill him. That feeling was... I confess, I feel rather excited. It is a powerful memory. Someday, perhaps, I hope I can feel it again. Incineration will begin in seven minutes. I'm going to kill you. Good! Snake's words were a guttural growl, barely audible. Hmm? What was that? I'll kill you. I'll kill you! Ah, so you're going to kill me. Please do. 
Come now. I'm waiting. Don't do it! Don't listen to him, Snake! Stop it, kid. He's screwing with your head. Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Don't! The snake! Don't do it! Ah, <sighs> Snake could no longer hear them. Snake could no longer hear anything. Oh, this is a bad end, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bad end. Snake moved like a bolt of lightning. Did nobody mention he had a gun to him? His scream echoed through the incineration chamber, full of rage and despair. Snake! Snake! Oh, god damn it. Okay, look, I kind of hate that his face is obscured by this. I wish I could turn that off. I can't. Usually you can, like, right-click or something to hide visual novel UI, but you, not this game. See, if Santa were here, <laughs> if Santa were here, he would show up and he would, he would pull a sword out from nowhere and suddenly, suddenly the song would start playing. His eyes would turn red and I'm, I, I'm already, I already just don't want to commit to the joke. Another scream filled the room. It was Lotus. She ran across the room toward Junpei, her eyes wide with terror. And then Santa shows up! Lotus! Hurry! This way! Snake's ill-fated attack had loosened Ace's grip on her, and she made a run for it. She reached Seven and Junpei and ducked behind them. <sighs> it might have been the first time I've ever had, like, a random joke prepared out of nowhere like that. Minutes. Give me the woman. God, he's so evil. I'm so evil. What's going on with the barrel of this gun? It doesn't look right. Like, the, this hole is too... Uh, he raised the gun. I need her. Without her bracelet, I will be unable to open this door. Oh, that sucks, man. Why are you shoving the math in my face? Quickly now! I don't have time for your shenanigans. In the center of the room, Snake's body lay eerily still. He looked like a human larva. What the fuck? Prone and vulnerable on the floor. I see. Then it would seem I have no choice. The rest of you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, and the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. I will take Lotus's body with me and leave this room. Incineration will begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. I rather enjoyed playing with you. What's that noise? What's that? Is that? You hear that? It's getting closer. What's? What? Is, what is that? God, I love that song. It's so good. Damn it! Junpei could see Ace's finger tighten. He could see it begin to squeeze down on the trigger. Uh, you see, here's the thing, like, this obviously isn't the, the true ending, because, like, too many people are dying and stuff, so... I, I, I'm... Yeah, I'm probably gonna die here, aren't I? Like, where are we in the flow? I don't know. Is this the real ending? His body tensed, preparing for the catastrophic impact of hot lead against human flesh. Goodbye. Then it happened. It? it? 
Okay, that's like the... No, no, we're done with that. We're done with that. Kill you. Snake stood up. It's impossible. Okay, it's kind of ruining the moment. For the first time, Ace's composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward one step closer to Ace. Then another. He looked for all the world like a zombie. I'll kill you. Good. Oh, I skipped it. Whoops. His voice was the mournful wailing of the undead. St stay away from me. Get back. Stop. If you come any closer, I'll, I'll get away from me. Little by little, Ace was retreating. Snake didn't stop. He continued his stiff, inexorable approach. His eyes tw twin pools of pure fury. Listen to me. I said, don't come any closer. Shit, you bastard. He's already been shot. Like, what do you expect? There go your bullets, idiot. Ace's revolver leapt five times. Five times the air in the incinerator was split by the crack of a bullet. Snake's body twitched as cl five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. A fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. That's such an eerie, like... It's, it's a thing that's described by people who have seen other people get, like, you know shot at with a firearm that this pink mist thing I I, uh, I really don't like imagining it Junpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before oh he's still going and then his strength was gone his legs crumpled and his broken and battered body slid to the floor oh maybe not never mind Incineration will begin in to be fair there's something on my mouse pad what the fuck is that get off This is not the time for me to be getting distracted, goddammit. There. It was, like, stuck inside of it. Um, no, no, he did- that was very helpful, because now Ace has literally nothing to work with us against. Three minutes. And I'm gonna fucking strangle him- no, Seven will strangle him to death with his bare hands. <laughs> Finally, you're- Oh, Snake wasn't done. I'll kill you. Even as the pool of blood beneath him grew, he began to move. He half crawled, half slid toward Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's leg. How the fuck am I gonna pick a thumbnail for this stream? There's so much. There's so much. You won't get away. That I can't pick, because it's too spoilery. And the other gripped his thigh with strength that wouldn't that shouldn't have been long gone. You, you son of a bitch! You you're a monster! Get off me! Let me go, damn you! He kicked that snake with his free leg, driving his foot into Snake's face, his arm, his shoulder. It made no difference. Snake refused to release him. Once Snake had ensnared its... <laughs> Once a snake has ensnared its prey, rarely does it release it. Oh my god. This is it, Ace. We're going to burn to death together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. What about I? Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn it. Damn you. Get off. Let me. Go, you monster! I would really like to see Ace burn to death and scream in agony. I mean, oh no! Okay, 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 look. Think about it this way. Oh, now he's gonna plead. My company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. <laughs> you're, you're not wounded too seriously. I, I'm sure they can fix you up easily. Oh my god, he's so... Oh, I hate him. You don't have to die. You could be saved. Just let me go. 
<laughs> okay, I, he's very, like, stereotypical evil anime villain-esque, but, like, I, I do like how absolutely pathetic they make him here. Pathetic. Begging for your life. Then Seven and Lotus begin to speak. Junpei could hear his tears. He, hear his tears. Hear tears in their voices, and their words were strained. Snake, that's enough. You can stop now. Yes, he's right, Snake. You've done enough. He's been shot five, six times. It's a little too late, probably. On, Snake, let's go. Let's get out of here. You have to come with us. We have to leave together. Snake turned toward them. He coughed and blood spattered across the floor. Then he smiled a sort of sad smile. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. Yeah, the piece of paper... Wait. Because I'm thinking what's going to happen is I'll be able to go back to this one and put in the code correctly. What is the decision here? I don't know. And what is the decision here? Leave no one behind. How do I get to the other one? I don't know. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up! Be quiet! <laughs> oh, that's that is a golden Can I get that? I need a clip of that. Shut up! Be quiet! I need that. I need a I need a fucking like I need a sound bite of that. I couldn't save Clover. My sister died because of me. No, she died because of, of of this guy. Him? This guy the guy you're clinging on to, he's gonna burn. Please, I want him to I want to hear him scream. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Perhaps in the afterlife. She can forgive me. Go. Go now. You know, not just including the fact that he murdered Clover with his bare hands, like, he's also responsible for the nonary game. So, yeah, this is pretty... It's not a good ending, but it's satisfying. You have to... Go. I'm so happy Snake isn't evil. Like, I didn't... I, I wasn't certain if he was or not. It was just, like, s suspicious, you know, that they know so much about it. And it made sense that they would be, but, you know, it's... It doesn't, like, feel like it fits his character, I guess, even though I don't know much about him. Anyway. I'm burning the moment. God damn it! Shit! We're out of time! We gotta go! <sighs> oh, Seven ran toward the exit. Lotus followed him. But Junpei... Junpei couldn't move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks where his tears had washed the blood away. He was broken, body and soul, and Junpei felt as though half of his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried desperately to swallow to clear the lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now! Uh, Junpei's chest tightened. Pulled taut by anger, misery, and a cold feeling of emptiness. Pure emotion surged through his heart, alongside the torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller and taller. And then it broke, crashing down with thunderous force onto his shaken, unprepared mind. Snake! Snake! Junpei's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. Wait! Don't be an idiot, Junpei! He felt a hand grab him from behind. It was seven. Before he had time to react, the larger man had pinned Junpei's arms to his sides, and he was hauling him bodily back toward the door. No! No! I have to help Snake! 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 
Get off of me! Let me go! Incineration will begin in... 10 seconds. Seven. Six. Damn it, I don't get a choice, kid! Don't blame me for this, all right? Oh, God damn it. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let me hear the scream. Junpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach, and then his legs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up from the same in the same motion and leapt through the door. It slammed shut behind them. Junpei struggled to his shaky feet. He glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Junpei ran to the door. <laughs> He's... There was a small window cut into it. Uh -uh. Inside, he could see Ace and Snake. Jin! Good. Damn you all! Why? Why? Why me? I don't deserve this! Hesame! Hesame Zero! I have such like it's. I have a grin on my face, but it's like pained. I, uh... Sorry, his voice actor. Zero! Zero! He's doing an okay job. It's just like, I don't know, just the... Goodbye. Oh, that's so satisfying. Zero! Oh, yes. He didn't know how much time had passed. He didn't know how long he stood there in front of the incinerator. <gasps> he looked to the side. Lotus's face was ashen, and if not for the hand she put against the wall, Junpei didn't think she could have stood. Seven looked old and tired and used. His eyes stared at the floor, seeing nothing. <sighs> Junpei said nothing. He simply began to walk toward the open door and the hallway they'd come down earlier. Hey, wait! Junpei! Junpei, where are you going? He blinked when their voices broke the silence. He stopped. You stay here. I'll go get Santa and Jun. You're gonna bring them here? How? Don't worry about that. Just stay here and wait, all right? <laughs> he began to walk again. He looked over his shoulder and watched Seven and Lotus grow smaller and smaller. Let me check something real quick. They stared back, not moving. He wasn't sure if they could. He turned around again. He knew where he was going. I saw an elevator on the way here. What? what? If I can get it to work, then maybe... Before long, Junpei found himself in front of the elevator. Next to the door was a button with a triangle on it. Please work. He pushed it and the door opened. Fuck, what elevator is this? Yes. The 
Junpei was in a large hospital room. June! Santa! Use the pick of the incinerator nameplate? I think I got a good one. I don't think the, the picture of um, Seven holding back Junpei is too spoilery. I'll probably use that. For the thumbnail, that is. Try as he might, he couldn't find them. Damn it. Where did they go? Increasingly frustrated and increasingly worried, Junpei left the large hospital room. He had no choice. He would have to look for them. Junpei's heart was heavy. He couldn't shake the feeling, but there was a part of him that felt it would be wrong to, even if he could. With every step he took, his legs felt more and more like lead. So, Clover and Snake are definitely not Zero, or at least not in cahoots with him. Ace is not Zero. That only leaves one person. Sometime, no, probably not. <laughs> Sometime later, Junpei found himself at the chapel. It's, it's June. He stepped inside expecting to find nothing. But they're on the red carpet in the center of the room. Or she's dead. June. No, code names didn't matter any longer. She was Connie. Connie. Junpei cried her name and ran. Like lightning, he ran across the room toward her. Connie. He stumbled to a stop. As he looked down at her body lying so still on the floor, he felt the icy grip of fear upon his heart. She was still. So very still. No, no. It, it can't be. It's, it's impossible. Slowly, Junpei bent down toward her. His hands shook, and he felt very cold and very hot at the same time. He forced himself to look. Her back. Her back was moving. Slowly, it rose and fell. Relief washed over him. Oh, Connie! Junpei reached down and gently, very gently, lifted her up. Lift Connie, edited. Connie, are you alright? Jumpy? Jumpy. Okay, look. If she is evil. Okay, I. Hold on a minute. Okay, god damn. If it were right at the end here and this were a bad ending, if she was evil, I'm, I don't know. I still think it's suspicious that her bracelet didn't fall off, but like, if she is evil, I want her, like, right at this scene, her face contorts to a grin and she impales him in the stomach. Laughs like, like a maniac and then bad end acquired. Her face was pale. Her lips were dry and cracked. It'd be so perfect. Her eyes were blank and cloudy. They stared straight at Junpei but saw nothing. Trembling, Junpei wrapped his arm around her back. She was cold. Very cold. Junpei tried to convince himself that it was only his imagination, but she felt as though she were fading away. He could feel his heart pounding frantically in his chest. Oh man, Connie, what the hell happened to you? You, you feel... Junpei, I'm sorry. Her voice was very faint. I, um, I might not make it. I still don't know what's wrong with her. No way. No way. I am going to let you die. I am going to save you. I promise. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much. Oh, for everything. I was really happy to see you again, Jumpy. Really happy. Oh, don't give me that I was crap. You're going to see me again lots more times. 
Just gotta hang on. All right, Connie? Chubby, did you know? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do... Yes, yes, I am. Did you know that Vaporeon? You meant a lot to me when we were kids. Where's Santa? I liked you for a long time, Junpei. A really long time. Junpei's vision had gone blurry. It took him a moment to realize his eyes were filled with tears. He could feel a piercing point of heat deep in his heart, like a white-hot flame. He looked down at Akane. What? Oh, there was a crack of static above his head, and a voice spoke. Zero. You son of a bitch! Where are you hiding? Junpei frantically scanned the ceiling for the source of the voice. It came from June. Oh my god, no. What the hell are you talking about? No. No, it hasn't. I'm not gonna let it end yet. I'm gonna get out of here with Kane. Why? The wrong path? Alright, well, I mean, she's not zero, at least. I I'd be so fucking fu like. Like, it just pans back to her, she has evil grin, and then she stabs him and laughs maniacally. Bad ending acquired, wait for part two, $60, please. I'm just saying it'd be perfect. What are you talking about? So, is this supposed to imply that Santa is zero? I told you! I am not gonna lose! No one. What? What? Uh, Jinpei did not have time to ponder what that meant before. He heard a door slam shut behind him. He spun around. There was no one there. Was it Zero? Wait here. I'll be right back, I promise. <sighs> she managed a single nod. Junpei laid her back down gently and leapt for the door. He yanked it open and shot outside. What is happening? This is like, in, like so, there's too much happening. No one. The hall was empty. There was nothing moving anywhere. Damn it. Where are you? It doesn't matter. I need to get Connie out first. He didn't want to leave Connie alone any longer than he had to, so Junpei turned around and headed back to the chapel. Okay, maybe she is zero. I don't <coughs> C C Connie. She wasn't there. She wasn't anywhere. Mm. She'd been lying there on the floor just moments before. And now she was gone. Oh, God. No. No. Where is she? Connie. 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 Connie! His cry split the heavens themselves. He screamed until his voice gave out. Then he screamed some more. But there was nothing. 
No answer. His voice faded away. All that remained was cold, unfeeling silence. This was when he noticed it. Huh? A strange smell. One he'd smelled before. Wait. This is... Nine seconds later, Junpei's mind winked out. Uh, what? happened that was so like anticlimactic pocket sand final route look forward to the final route of 999 how much time do you think is left would you say like two hours maybe three maybe less I get the feeling like the final route's gonna have a big lore dump. Cause, you know, final route, I'm gonna learn a lot of things. I'm assuming I can get like one good stream out of this again. Cause here's the thing, it's kinda- I started really late today. I f and, and this is just like, it's, it's almost too good of a stopping point. The end. Or is it? June is zero. That's the second time that she's been suspicious. No, no, she's zero. Or at least working for him. I I'm fucking, like, convinced of it now. Sure, Ace is an asshole, but he's not zero. I also don't know, like, June's connection, do I? Sorry, Akane. Akane. Now is the time. Let our game begin. Would you like to save the info you've obtained? Three endings. That was an en It didn't open up another tile, though. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, it did. That was the ending. Okay. Oh. It gave me a key. Like a big boy key. Hold on a minute. Oh, interesting. Wait, red key? Huh? Why are these keys red? Oh, it unlocked this. And now this is unlocked. What happens when I click on that? I this noise is super uncomfortable. What? Why are they different colors? They correspond to a lot. Wait a minute. Why are they blacked out, though? I didn't realize that they would be color-coded. Like this. And... This is for a lock I haven't found yet. A white circle. 
Yellow triangle, red square. Oh. How do I get this then? I was wondering why these were X'd out. So these are for, I guess, another choice here? But how do I get to this? I guess I have to do this next? It's too good of a spot to leave off, man. Like, it is late. I should be a responsible adult. I know it's a short stream, but like... Man, I mean, I'll probably do this to, like next time I stream. I don't know about t if I stream tomorrow. I gotta stop saying I, I will stream tomorrow, because like... It's too much of a commitment for my dumb monkey brain to handle. No, really though. Like, I might stream tomorrow. I'm not sure, but like... I really want to see what happens next. God damn it. Why did I get no keys on this route at all? That's still weirding me out. Well, I guess you have to complete the route first, but I kind of, I, wait, no, these showed up after I completed this route. I'd got nothing for this one. Laboratory, I got a key for that. I don't know how you do these. I don't know. Why is there a key for this one here? Huh. I mean, in any case, it took two and a half hours to get from here to here. And that's like... Yeah, that's, that's probably a decent amount of stream left. Um... If I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'll probably stream tomorrow. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go. It's too good of a spot to leave off. I could stream for like another half hour maybe, but like, what do I do? It is also late and I should, I should be a responsible adult. So, did I save it? I don't know, do it again. It's a little bit of an awkward position to leave off at, but I mean, well, no, no, it's not. It is a short stream. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, I, wow. Huh. That was something. Fuck, I'm gonna have to stream this next time I stream. Shit. I will very likely be back tomorrow. If not, then the day after. I, I'm gonna, next time I stream, it's gonna be this. I can't wait any longer. I, I need to see what happens. Stop hiccuping, please. Like, body. Stop! Yeah, I, I guess I'll go. Um, Thanks for stopping by. That was, whew. Junpei screamed like three times in that stream. There was a lot of Junpei screaming. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you soon, most likely tomorrow, um, with more 9, 9, nine. I have to see what happens. Man, is this gonna do one of those things where I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, oh, I got another achievement. I got two more achievements. The game has been super stingy with the achievements. Saw all previews in 999 and saw the lost ending. Huh. Yeah, the game has been super stingy with achievements. I have 3 out of 38, and I have 24 hours in the game. 23.3. Also, on the Steam page, there's this guy who has a, a blue, like, jumpsuit on with a grenade pattern on it. I don't know who that is. I'm assuming he's the main character of the other game. Because the non-ary games... No, non games is, like, there's two characters, so... There's two games, two characters, it makes sense, right? Anyway, um... This is going to be one of those things where, like, I'm going to finish 999 and immediately want to move on to, um... What's it called? Zero Escape? I'm... Virtue's Last Reward. Okay, I can just close the launcher. I'm just now noticing the launcher has the characters of each game on it. Like, you got all the ones on the left, and then on the right, I see... Jumpsuit, Blue Man... Uh, female Santa... Some dude who looks like a character from Xenoblade. Um, old guy. I don't, I don't, I don't recognize any of these characters. I probably shouldn't. Anyway, 
Uh, I should probably stop the recording now. Thanks for stopping by. I will see you tomorrow. I'm definitely not still talking so I can get the time to two hours and 30 minutes exactly. Woo, nice.